This is your USMNT Abroad Weekend update from February 4th to February 6th of 2022. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Felipe, and welcome to Tackerman TV, and welcome to a channel favorite, the USMNT Abroad series, where every Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend, and every Friday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the midweek. And yes, this Friday we will have a US Men's National Team Abroad series, as many of the players will be playing midweek. I know it does seem like this weekend was a medical department abroad pretty much many players weren't available but Giovanni Reina is back and there's a lot of good stuff to talk about so stay tuned for that I'll also be explaining why I'm wearing a Palmeiras jacket for this video I'll explain it on the Chelsea section with that said everyone don't forget to hit that like button before we start I won't be requesting much during the video subscribe if you enjoy this type of content welcome to the channel if you're new and let's let's just get started All right, so normally we start with the transfer updates, but no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. During this week, keep an eye out. We will be doing a January transfer window recap of all the American transfers. So Wednesday, Tuesday, or Thursday, expect a video summarizing for you all the American transfers abroad, MLS, transfer fees, all the details that you need to know. So with that said, let's start with our top five players, then we'll go by position. Let's start with Christian Pulisic from Chelsea. Pulisic was not with Chelsea on Saturday during their FA Cup match. It makes sense as many players that were with the U.S. Men's National Team camp were rested on Saturday. Long trip from the United States to Europe and he did play also Wednesday a couple minutes. Expect Pulisic to be back this midweek as Chelsea has a match for the FIFA Club World Cup semifinals. And that's your explanation to why I'm wearing the Palmeiras jacket. The other semifinals has Palmeiras. So stay tuned for that. If Palmeiras makes it to the final... Do you guys want us to make a live watch along? It'll be over the weekend. Palmeiras versus Chelsea. If Palmeiras make it. Would you want to do it? Comment down below and we'll likely do so. And if you're a Rayados Monterrey fan from Mexico, I'm sorry. You guys got knocked out already. Now Weston McKinney from Juventus, a.k.a. Air Weston. But no, he didn't score off a header this time. On Sunday, Weston McKinney started off on the bench getting some much needed rest that he very much needed for sure. He did come into this game at the 83rd minute during Juventus's 2-0 win. Now look, Juventus made some great signings in the January window. Two of them scored this game, and they're looking to bounce back at the second half of the season, perhaps even challenge for the title. But that might be a little bit tough at this point as the current gap with Inter Milan is pretty big. They do play midweek for the Italian Cup. Wes McKinney is expected to start. Now to the man of the hour, the one that is back. Giovanni Reina from Borussia Dortmund. Yes, Gio Reina is finally back it's been what like four months and Reina started off on the bench and came in at the 61st minute for Hazard during Dortmund's 5-2 loss to Leverkusen now to be fair I know it's a big loss but when he came in it was already 4-1 he came in playing as a right winger pinching in quite a bit then around the 75th minute he came in to play as a central midfielder as an eight where he would go on to have a great goal scoring opportunity saved by the goalkeeper and he probably could have done better on that finish Later, he was back on the wing for roughly a minute or two and then back to playing central to finishing off the game almost like a 10. He looked sharp for someone that hasn't played for three months, but definitely not at his best, at least not now. During those 29 minutes, Giovanni Reina managed to get 27 touches, 100% passing accuracy out of 19 passes, one key pass, one shot on target, one big chance missed, and won two out of five ground duels. So for someone that hasn't played for months, Pretty good minutes right there. Pretty good performance in limited minutes. That's what I meant. Giovanni Reina, welcome back. Now, Serginho Dest from Barcelona. And he stayed at Barcelona after this January window. On Sunday, Dest started off on the bench for Barcelona and came in at the 71st minute during their 4-2 win against Atletico Madrid at Camp Nou. Now, maybe Dest would have not come in for this game. He was subbed in right after Dani Alves got a red card. At least, he is clearly gonna be getting a chance in the next match as Dani Alves will be suspended at least we think he will he will have to grab that opportunity and make the best out of it to impress Xavi and we saw in camp how much his defense has improved let's hope to continue to see gradual improvement and I want him to establish himself in Barcelona I don't want him to leave well, at one point I did. Now I want him to stay and establish himself, at least these six months. Quick update on Tyler Adams before we go to the goalkeepers. Tyler Adams was not available for Leipzig. He did have that muscle injury for the U.S. men's national team. Apparently it's not very severe, so he should be back soon. But he wasn't available for Leipzig over the weekend. Now let's go by positions. And we'll start with the goalkeepers. And Zach Steffen 
played over the weekend, which is odd because he didn't play for the United States because he was injured, but he played for Manchester City right at the weekend after. Along with that, they faced Fulham, so I'm going to talk about Tim Ream and Anthony Robinson, a.k.a. Jedi. On Saturday, Stefan started for Manchester City and went to full 90 minutes, while Tim Ream started for Fulham and went to full 90 minutes as well during Manchester City's 4-1 win against Fulham in the FA Cup. As for Jedi Robinson, he was not with the team. He was being rested after having a lot of minutes with the U.S. Men's National Team this camp. Well, he played all of them. Zach Steffen was fine in this game. No blame from the goal. It was in pretty close range, but he did look shaky with his feet at times. Besides that, he wasn't really heavily tested. As for Tim Ream, no blame in the first goal. However, in the second goal, the header from Stones had Tim Ream in the play. So he does have a little bit of blame, quite a bit of blame, to be honest, on that play. The third goal as well. He did not commit the PK, but he did allow Jack Grealish to just completely blow by him with ease to draw the PK with the next defender. As for the fourth goal, Tim Ream just got unlucky. He was trying to recover for his teammates' mistakes. The ball did deflect off him before it went in, but that one, it was not his fault. Now, it's good to see Zach Steffen back from the back injury that kept him out of the U.S. Men's National Team camp. All right, for goalkeepers, I'm not going to talk about Ethan Horvath. He continues to just warm the bench for Nottingham Forest. With that said, we're going to go now to the center backs, and we'll start with John Brooks from Wolfsburg. And since we're going to talk about Wolfsburg, I'm going to include Kevin Paredes, a new signing from Wolfsburg. And I'm going to include the Firth players because they faced Wolfsburg over the weekend. So we're going to talk about John Brooks, Kevin Paredes, Julian Green, and Tim Tillman. On Sunday, we had a matchup of two teams that are struggling this season and each had two Americans. John Brooks started for Wolfsburg and played 85 minutes, while Kevin Paredes stayed on the bench the full 90 for Wolfsburg. As for Firth, Tim Tillman started and played 85 minutes as he was replaced by Julian Green in the final five. So pretty much three of the four Americans were involved in subs at the 85th minute. Now as for the game, Wolfsburg defeated Firth 4-1. John Brooks played as a left center back in a back three. He had six clearances, one block shots, two tackles, one dribble pass. He also won three out of five ground duels, two out of four aerial duels, and he had 79 touches. Now, the next player on the list would have been Chris Richards and Justin Che. Justin Che wasn't even on the bench for Hoffenheim over the weekend, and Chris Richards is out for roughly probably another four weeks after he got injured in the U.S. men's national team camp with an ankle sprain against Canada. Now, Eric Palmer Brown from Troy at League A. Uh. On Sunday, Palmer Brown started and went to full 90 minutes for Troy during their 0 0 draw with Metz at League A, uh, aka the French League. Palmer has started the past three games for Troy, and all three games he had strong performance. For this game over the weekend, he was one of the best players in the field. But listen, I'm not saying that we should bring him to the national team yet. We need to see more performances like this, and there's many players ahead of him that weren't included in camp. For example, we just talked about John Brooks. We have talked about and we will very soon about Cameron Carter Vickers. But that means Eric Palmer Brown should be a player that Greg Berhalter has to be keeping an eye on. Now, Matt Miazga from Deportivo Alaves in La Liga. On Saturday, Miazga stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Alaves during their 3 1 loss to Elche. And hey, they allowed three goals in this game, so maybe play Miazga. Next on the list is a guy that normally doesn't play much, but for some reason, he's always in the U.S. men's national team roster. That's Mark McKenzie from Genk. On Sunday, McKenzie did not even make the bench. It could have been due to the long trip, but also I don't think Genk makes much of an effort to play McKenzie anyway. I just don't get it. It seems like he's just traveling around and barely playing at this point. He also got no minutes with the U.S. men's national team. So let's just be honest. He should not be in the next camp if he continues to not get minutes. He was not a problem in this camp, but you might as well just bring Brooks back or have Cameron Carter Vickers get a chance. But don't worry, don't worry. Greg will probably not bring Mark McKenzie because he's not getting any minutes. He'll probably bring in Aaron Long that also hasn't played for eight to nine months due to an Achilles injury. The last center back I'm going to talk about is Cameron Carter Vickers from Celtic in Scotland. On Sunday, CCV started and went the full 90 minutes for Celtic during their 4-0 win over Motherwell in the Scottish Premiership. Now, I'm not going to talk about this stats because this game he wasn't heavily tested. But again, he is one of the best center backs in the Scottish Premiership, if not the best. Okay, time to move to the fullbacks. So I'm not going to talk about Anthony Robinson. We already went through that. Reggie Cannon did not play this weekend. He was not with Boa Vista, probably still recovering from the cold in Minnesota. So the next player on the list is Sam Vines from Antwerp. On Saturday, Sam Vines started and went the full 90 minutes for Antwerp during their 2-0 home loss to Union Saint in the Belgium League. Next one on the list is Brian Reynolds, and he has a new home, a new team. He was loaned out by Roma, and bear with me, I will probably be butchered their name. On Saturday, Brian Reynolds started for his new club. Bear with me right here. Korch Rijk. 
Did I get that right? And went the full 90 minutes during their 3-0 loss to STVV in the Belgium League. For what it looks like, he had a pretty strong performance. I wasn't able to watch this game personally. Brian had 96 touches, 88.4% passing accuracy, was fouled four times, won seven out of nine ground duels, and won one out of his one aerial duel. Let's hope the young player can get his career back on track with this loan, eventually returning to Roma and getting his spot at the Italian Giants. All right, now Joe Scali and George Bello. They faced each other over the weekend, kind of. On Saturday, we had a matchup of two teams that their names ain't that easy to pronounce, or maybe one of them is. Joe Scali started off on the bench and stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Gladbach, while Bello made his Bundesliga debut coming in at the final 20 minutes for Armenia Billenfeld. And I think I said their name right. Bello looked okay. He looked like he was part of the league essentially those minutes will shoot up if he can continue to maintain that level and gradually improve as for the game itself it ended on a 1-1 draw so it was good to see Bello come in right away one week of practice or two at most and get minutes got 20 minutes if he can perform the way he did for this game which he looked like he belonged to the team in the league and gradually improves those minutes will go up quick update on jonathan gomez he's playing right now for real sociedad b over the weekend they play in la liga 2 and he stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes i'll make sure to keep an eye on him whenever he starts to get minutes but that's just a quick update on jonathan gomez the mexican-american dual national that we must not lose now kyle duncan from ostende in belgium and if they're players with new teams don't worry we'll do the video of the transfer recap over the midweek so you guys will know where each player is playing now on saturday duncan started and went to full 90 minutes as a right wing back for ostende during their 3-1 loss to leuven in belgium and that does it for the fullback section we had to remove the andre gedlin as he went down to inter miami to join forces with break shea so Inter Miami is looking pretty strong for this season, if you ask me. I mean, they have the GOAT, and now they have the Andre Yedlin. But that does it for the fullbacks, because there's no more Yedlin. All right, now to the midfielders, and let's start the pleasant surprise of this weekend, which was Yunus Musa, and he started for Valencia, which I wasn't expecting for him to start right after camp. On Sunday, Musa started and went 80 minutes for Valencia during their 0-0 draw with Real Sociedad. Now, Musa played central for this game. He played as a dual-8 central midfielder alongside Moriba, their new signing from Leipzig on a loan. On a 3-5-2 formation or a 5-3-2 formation, whatever you want to call it. His pressing game was pretty good. The Real Sociedad player were also struggling with Yunus Musa's pace and strength throughout the first half. He was very active, mostly in the first half, obviously, and defensively. He had one clearance, one block shot, one interception, three tackles, 30 touches, and one key pass. And I also must point out that this is the fourth straight La Liga start for Yunus Musa that he has had for Valencia, picking up some good momentum, and I like the fact that he was playing in the midfield centrally alongside Moriba. Yeah, I thought him and Moriba together looked very good in this game, and Real Sociedad that's a tough opponent. They were able to get a 0-0 draw. Not bad. Now, Johnny Cardoso from Internacional in Brazil. On Saturday, Johnny was not available due to a minor injury. It was just precaution. But during the midweek, he started and played the full 90 minutes for Internacional and had a very good performance as he continues to impress the Internacional's new coach. He just needs to lock in that starting job. They do play on a 4-2-3-1 double pivot. That's where he usually plays as one of the sixes. The only issue is they just signed Gabriel from Corinthians. That is a veteran in the league and likely to start. So we'll see how that affects Johnny. There's also been some rumors circulating in brazil that johnny would be heading to mls i i asked and apparently they're not true just saying it could happen yeah sure maybe it will but from the sources i have near johnny they've said it's not true or at least they don't know about a negotiation between mls club and international for now next on the list are the venezia boys tenor tasman and gianluca busio on sunday busio and tasman start off on the bench for venezia during their 2-0 loss to napoli busio came into this game at the 70th minute as venezia was already down 1-0 trying to make a comeback took him a few minutes to get a yellow card as for the stats not much to talk about there in limited minutes coming in late against a tough opponent he had less than 20 touches on the ball so i don't have much to say there as for venezia they're currently in the relegation zone yes they do have a game to play and if they win they will be one point ahead of Cagliari and send Cagliari into relegation zone as they're currently only two points behind them with a match to play but the situation ain't good and it's going to be dramatic till the very last round yeah as many americans we can only hope they don't get relegated but it's looking like it's going to be a very tough battle till the very last minute 
Also, let's be honest, um, as an Orlando City fan, <laughs> signing Nani to save you from relegation to Serie A is not very promising. Next is James Sands from Rangers. On Sunday, Sands stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for Rangers during their 5-0 win over Hearts in the Scottish Premiership. Now, Brandon Aronson, which is back to playing competitive matches for RB Salzburg. On Sunday, Brandon started and went to full 90 minutes for RB Salzburg and got an assist during their 3-1 win over LASK. This match was for the Austrian Cup quarterfinals and RB Salzburg has advanced. Now a player that has been talked about quite a bit the past week after his strong performance against Honduras, Luca De La Torre from Heracles, but it, it was a rough weekend for him. On Sunday, De La Torre started and played only 45 minutes for Heracles during their 3-0 loss to Ajax. Considering he survived hypothermia midweek for the US Men's National Team and Ajax completely dominated this game, like truly dominated this game with three goals, 12 shots on target versus zero from Heracles, 71% ball possession. Yes, it was tough for any Heracles player to perform. Luca played a more advanced role for this one as a 10 at times and even looking as a shadow striker. So I don't know, he looked even like a striker to me at, at, at certain moments of the game and certain moments as a playmaking 10. So much more advanced role than he did for the US Men's National Team and more advanced than he normally plays for Heracles. But as for this game against Ajax, I can't say he played bad, but I can't say he played well. Just couldn't do anything. Quick update on Cole Bassett. He was available for Feyenoord in the Dutch League this weekend, but he stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes. Next on the list is Alex Mendes from Vizela. On Sunday, Alex Mendes started and played 56 minutes for Vizela during their 2-2 draw with Boa Vista. And Reggie Can, as I said earlier in the video, was not with Boa Vista for this one. Next on the list is Ian Harks from Dundee United in Scotland. On Saturday, Harks started and went the full 90 minutes for Dundee United during their 0-0 draw with St. Johnstone in Scotland. Next one is Dwayne Holmes from Huddersfield. On Saturday, Dwayne Holmes started and played 84 minutes, scored the game-winning goal for Huddersfield during their 1-0 win over Barnsley in the FA Cup. Huddersfield moves on to the next round thanks to Holmes' goal. Last midfielder I want to talk about is Richie Ledesma. He was moved to the young PSV, so he's now the senior team at the time. That's technically their B team or younger team. He's been struggling after he came back from that ACL injury, but he'll bounce back. All right, now we've reached the forwards. We're reaching the end of the video, so if you haven't already, please hit the like button if you enjoy these types of videos. That's how we continue to do them, by knowing what people enjoy or not. And... Who am I kidding? Even if you don't hit the like button, me and Dustin will continue to make these videos because we enjoy it. And it's a channel favorite. So now let's talk about Tim Weah from Lille. On Sunday, Weah started and played 70 minutes for Lille during their 5-1 loss to PSG. And so did Jonathan David. He started as well. I guess Lille cannot afford to rest their American-born boys, you know, the American-born players. For this one, Weah had 30 touches, 74% passing accuracy, no key passes, lost possession eight times, won four out of six ground duels while playing as a right midfielder slash right winger. Lille currently sits at 11 plates this season, and they have already lost seven games out of 22 in the league. Last year, just so you get an idea, they lost only three games in 38 matches when they were the French champions. So this has been a rough season for the current champions of league uh man I i'm glad canadians don't watch this year at least i think canadians don't watch this series they would probably get pissed off about that joke quick update on conrad de la fuente he was not available for olympique marseille's game over the weekend but apparently he's coming back from injury and training this week so expect conrad to be back available at least for games anytime soon in regards to the minutes we'll have to wait and see what sampaoli does now, on Saturday with Augsburg, Ricardo Pepe was not available. He was not even off the bench. Thankfully enough, Augsburg did win as they battle against relegation in Bundesliga, but Pepe should be back next week, all right? So he was just being rested because of the long trip to the U.S. Men's National Team, plus he played on Wednesday. Now, Matthew Hoppe from Mallorca. On Saturday, well, Hoppe was back to the same old, same old. No minutes, just stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes. Eventually... You have to look for a move after you made the wrong move. And Hoppy might need to reevaluate that over the summer. Now, Daryl DK didn't play for West Brom over the weekend. He's recovering from a hamstring injury that he got a few weeks ago. He should be out for another five weeks. So don't expect DK in February. Next on the list is Nicolas Joachini from Montpellier at Liga. On Saturday, Joachini started and played 68 minutes for Montpellier. He played wide. He didn't play as a center forward during their 3-1 loss to Saint-Étienne. Now, when he left the game, it was 1-0 for Montpellier at the time. Then, they lost 3-1. I'm not saying that's the reason. I'm just telling you what happened in the game. You judge it yourself. Now, Josh Sargent from Norwich. On Saturday, Sargent started for Norwich, but was cut last minute due to an illness. So, he was in the starting eleven. But he was cut before the game starts, so he didn't play. 
I have not seen any official reports out there of what happened exactly besides what I just said. It was an illness. Now, <laughs> there were rumors that he shat himself during the warm-up, but I didn't find anything in regards to that. So those are just probably fake rumors. All that was reported is that he had an illness, he was in the starting 11, and he got cut last minute. So he should be back in the next game. All right, the next player on the list is a former Orlando City player that just did a transfer right now in January, Chris Miller from Hibernian. And before I give his performance, this is a little fun fact. For some reason, I found out that I have an old Hibernian jersey after his transfer. I was looking through my jerseys and I found this. Why do I have it? I don't know, but I have it. In terms of performance, on Saturday, Miller started and went the full 90 minutes for Hibernian during their 1-0 loss to St. Mirren in the Scottish Premiership. Now, I'm going to try to watch one of his games or two to see how he's playing, how he's doing, what position, but I wasn't able to over the weekend, so that's all I got for y'all in the moment. Now, PFOC from BSC Young Boys in the Swiss League. On Saturday, PFOC started and played 89 minutes for BSC Young Boys during their 3-3 draw with St. Gallen. PFOC had a brace for this one, and when he was subbed off at the 89th minute, the game was 3-2 for BSC Young Boys. Now look, um, I don't think he's the savior and will fix our problems with our center forward position, our nine position, but if we're going to bring in Jesse Zardes and give Zardes minutes, you might as well bring in PFOC. At least he's scoring a lot abroad. So if you're going to bring in Zardes, PFOC deserves a chance. So I'm just saying that for the next window, as long as he continues to score. That's just what I'm saying. I mean, I would also like to see maybe sergeant back eventually even though apparently he shat himself in the warm i don't know i'm sorry that's a bad joke but anyhow you guys know what i mean about pfuck hopefully he is in the next camp if he's continuing to score last but not least christian ramirez that also plays in scotland and has been scoring on saturday ramirez started and went the full 90 minutes scoring a goal during arberdeen's 2-1 loss to livingston which by the way livingston i believe it's the team that sebastian soto just transferred to Ramirez now has 9 goals in 24 matches in the Scottish Premiership. Yeah, but Ramirez, I wouldn't bring him to the national team, okay? Just to leave that clear. Alright, real quick update before we wrap up the video on Fulleting Balogun that now plays for Middlesbrough. He's on a loan. On Friday, Balogun starred and played 62 minutes for Middlesbrough during their PK shootout win over Manchester United in the FA Cup. Balogun now is getting senior minutes with this loan, so let's keep an eye on him. He currently belongs to Arsenal. As for Manchester United, as a Manchester United fan, I can just say I missed the good old days and it's been painful to watch them under any coach. Before it was Ole the problem, now Ragnik, it's the same thing. It's weird. When we were under Oli, we looked bad. Now that we're under Ragnik, we look like we're under R Oli, if that makes any sense. All right, everyone, that does it for this episode of the USMNT Abroad. Thank you, everyone, that tuned in and came into the channel for the US Men's National Team Camp. It was lots of fun, and the growth of the channel has been insane. And I just want to say that me and Dustin are very thankful to having you guys in our community, um, probably one of the biggest U.S. men's national team soccer communities in the United States right now. And it's all thanks to you guys. So thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. Also, thank you, everyone that became a member of the channel to support the channel. You know, you get also extra videos and perks. So thank you very much for that. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this update. See you guys soon. Have a great day.